My name is Dr. Alan Klein. Um, I'm the director of the Center for the Diagnosis and Treatment of Pericardial Diseases here at the Cleveland Clinic. And it's very exciting to talk to you about uh, pericarditis. And I think this uh, area is very, very exciting because um, we're at the crossroads of advances in uh, imaging to diagnose pericarditis. And also, also now we have therapeutics such as the interleukin blockers, um, anakinra and relonisept to treat this. Uh, what do we have here at Cleveland Clinic? We have a, a center of excellence for pericardial disease, which basically is a multidisciplinary center where a patient with uh, what we call complicated pericarditis can come here for one to two days and see the uh, expert um, uh, pericardial specialist um, get a diagnosis see uh, other subspecialties such as rheumatology, um, collect um, blood samples for, for analysis for genetics, um, see a surgeon if a surgical option is available, have a heart catheterization. Uh, so basically it's one-stop shopping and within one to two days the patients will come back and get their diagnosis and, and the proper therapy. Um, so I should mention that it's a very exciting area because now we've come a long way from sort of an old diagnosis where you looked at EKG uh, changes or just clinical um, spectrum uh, of pericarditis to what we call complicated pericarditis. What complicated pericarditis means is that after the acute episode, um, which most of the time resolves, can be complicated. Complicated meaning that you have uh, recurrent uh, pericarditis in roughly a third of the patients, and around 6% of the patients can have multiple recurrences. And there are a few percent that uh, get what you call uh, constrictive pericarditis, so-called transient um, constrictive pericarditis, which is an inflammation, and a couple of percent can end up with um, advanced uh, constrictive pericarditis. Um, in terms of pericarditis, we think that there's like a spectrum of disease. Uh, we use MRI in particular to sort of um, prognosticate an MRI here at Cleveland Clinic uh, has a very pericarditis-specific pro protocol, uh, including late gadolinium enhancement. We use fat suppression to differentiate that from epicardial fat. And that baseline MRI can tell us, first of all, uh, do you have the diagnosis? Uh, I should mention 20% of the people here don't even have pericarditis that's referred here. But if you do have it and it looks uh, very, very bright, um, meaning that the uh, gadolinium, gadolinium gets into the pericardial space and it's very, very intense, very, very thick, as well as if you have edema swelling around the heart, that will predict uh, maybe up to three to five years of, of active uh, therapy before clinical remission. So that's a very, very powerful test uh, in terms of the management. Uh, there's a lot of exciting research going on uh, with pericarditis. As I mentioned, um, we now have targeted therapy with interleukin-1 blockers. Uh, there's two types of um, uh, IL-1 blockers. Is one that would, uh, drug would, uh, would be anakinra, a very um, uh, short-acting um, type drug, uh, which is recombinant uh, interleukin blocker. And then we also have relonoceps, which is an IL-1 alpha and beta trap. And this blocks the interleukin, much more targeted therapy than the, the standard therapy. Uh, as you know, we've, um, we were involved with the Rhapsody trial, which was published uh, last year um, in the New England Journal of Medicine and presented as a late-breaking trial at the American Heart Association meeting. And uh, our, our data from um, Rhapsody showed that um, Rolonisept uh, is very, very powerful in treating the acute episodes of recurrent pericarditis, uh, dramatically um, improving the CRP, uh, C-reactive protein, and also decreasing uh, the chest pain. And also, uh, strikingly, uh, lower the, um, dramatically the number of recurrences compared to placebo. Uh, there was a 96% uh, 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 risk reduction uh, with relonisept uh, compared to placebo. Very, very powerful um, uh, drug. This led to the FDA approval of the drug in March of 2021 and now it's available for, uh, for clinicians and patients to use. Um, in terms of our management of pericarditis, uh, we use the European Society of Cardiology guidelines. So this is a stepwise approach where um, acute and recurrent pericarditis is treated at first line with uh, NSAIDs, 
including ibuprofen or naproxen or aspirin, uh, plus colchicine. Uh, then if uh, patients fail that, uh, we move on to uh, low-dose prednisone. Um, and the problem with prednisone is that if you um, introduce prednisone and you take away too quick, this will cause a recurrence. So if you're giving prednisone, it's a very, very slow taper. And often patients are on what you call triple therapy, that is uh, NSA plus colchicine uh, plus prednisone. Um, now, I should mention that what patients don't like to hear is that they want to exercise, but uh, exercise and the heart are generally good, but it's very bad for inflamed uh, pericarditis. So we tell patients to, to restrict their activity and sort of almost like to uh, walk, walk the dog that, um, to get a heart rate uh, less than 100 beats per minute. Uh, but unfortunately, the exercise could aggravate the pericarditis. Now, if you fail the first line and second line, then you go on to the uh, biologics, uh, such as anakinra, relanocept, and drugs like imuran, or methotrexate, or IVIG. And then the fourth line uh, would be uh, pericardiectomy. So uh, from, from the data from Rhapsody, which showed that uh, relanocept is very powerful, uh, allowing patients to wean off prednisone and colchicine if they're resistant to that, uh, now you have a new drug that perhaps uh, could treat uh, those conditions if you're colchicine resistant, steroid dependent, but also perhaps you could come in even earlier after first line therapy to avoid the, uh, the prednisone. So, so called second line therapy. And this would have to be uh, shown in clinical trials. Uh, there's a lot of ongoing research in, in pericarditis. As I mentioned, that there's an explosion of interest, there's an explosion of publications in European Heart Journal, um, JAMA, um, Journal American Heart Association um, type publications, and JAK uh, on this area. Uh, the major interest now is um, these biologics for how long uh, do patients have to be treated with this? Um, and uh, when, can you, when can you stop it? Do you wean it or do you just stop it cold turkey? Uh, we're very interested in the genetic basis for pericarditis, and we have uh, ongoing studies on genetics. We're very interested in the effect of exercise in pericarditis. As I mentioned, exercise could aggravate things, but we have to do a, um, we're planning a, a randomized trial uh, with actually uh, um, the digital uh, Apple Watch to see if we can um, record the uh, heart rate and the number of steps to see if this aggravates uh, pericarditis. Uh, we're very interested in the post-cardiac injury. So if you have um, um, a, uh, a cardiology procedure, whether uh, electrophysiologic procedure, an ablation, or a pacemaker, uh, or even cardiac surgery, uh, what is the uh, role of those um, uh, uh, surgeries in causing uh, pericarditis? Uh, very briefly, like to mention about COVID. Uh, COVID-19, as you know, can affect um, the lungs and as well as the heart. And probably uh, between 4 and 10% cause some uh, myocardial and pericardial damage. Um, often we see patients that had COVID that um, uh, have chest pain, but we don't find too much. So it's pretty rare to get the, the myocarditis from the uh, COVID um, uh, virus. In addition, uh, recently you've heard a lot about the uh, COVID-19 um, mRNA vaccine, such as from Pfizer and Moderna. And a certain type of patient could get a uh, complication from the, um, uh, from the vaccine. It's pretty rare. It's roughly um, uh, two in 100,000 uh, uh, vaccinations. And basically, it's really affecting young people, young males around 19 or 20 years of age, actually with a lot of testosterone, and that seems to be um, some role in, the, in these type of conditions. It's usually self-limited. Uh, usually self-limited goes away with the standard therapy. So in summary, I think uh, this is a very exciting time for um, the treatment uh, of pericarditis. Now we have um, advanced imaging techniques, including echo and MRI to diagnose it. And now we have uh, advanced uh, therapeutics, targeted therapy with the IL-1 blockers to treat it. And we're definitely on top of pericarditis. Thank you very much for your attention.